Hey, welcome back guys. Before we get into the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this tutorial. I want to jump right into it so I don't waste any time and I can keep the video short for you. Uh, previously, I did a video uh, using Pro Tools on how to change presets and scenes with Pro Tools and change that, you know, change the presets and scenes on the Axe FX3. Uh, I'll link to the video right here and you can check that one out. First thing you're going to want to do is you want to hop onto the physical unit, the Axe FX3, hit the setup button, scroll down to the MIDI remote menu. Once you get there, there's an option to turn on program change. It should be a defa it defaults to off. So go ahead and just twist the dial, change that to on. After that, hit the page button, page over to the other tab. Inside there, there's going to be a scene select. This is set to off by default, but you need to set it to something. And this tutorial is 34. I believe the Axe, the Axe 8 is the same by default. So I just left it at that and I figured I'd be consistent. So change it to 34 if you want to get this to work. Uh, so the purpose here is if you want to control everything from a DAW, say you were playing a live show and you didn't have, didn't have a foot switch or you just want to make things more seamless and change presets for the entire bands or entire band. So you'd have these what they call MIDI lanes and you would put in these program changes and control changes uh, for presets and scenes, things like that. So I'm using the latest logic, it's 10.4 10 dot something. Um, and so when you launch this, you're gonna be faced with this, what kind of track do you wanna create? We're gonna create for this these MIDI lanes, we're gonna create an external MIDI track. Uh, you don't need anything under here. You can go ahead and just click create and it creates this one track. First thing, let's go ahead and double tap on this. And then we're gonna just name this, whatever you wanna name it, but I'm gonna name it Axe Effects. And then close it out. Enter doesn't do anything. You just have to actually close the red circle. Then we're going to go over to the left. If you don't see this, you'll see it. If you don't see it, just click the eye up here and that opens up the channel strip here. Scroll down to port. We're going to put AxeFX3 because that's where we want to send this stuff to. If you had some other device, you would pick it in here. On the AxeFX3, in order to change presets, we work in banks, so if you're in the, uh, you know, got, you want to change to the zero bank, you need to set the value to zero, one, and that, you know, is uh, one through 199, you know, two, 200 through 299, et cetera. Most of my presets are in the 300 range, so I'm going to be setting a value to three. CC number had, needs to be set to zero for the X effects. I'll show you how to do that. And then you're going to set a value corresponding after that that, that actually hits the actual preset. So bank first, and then you'll put a value of what it corresponds to. Too. Now, uh, Fractal has this nifty little cheat sheet I've pasted in here. I like to document all my stuff so I don't forget it. So in order to get to my preset, it says the following table lists the MIDI bank and program change messages required to select the XFX. Three presets, uh, MIDI bank select, CC uh, number zero, and then the, that's gonna be, you'll, you'll set the value, which tells it what bank to go to and then MIDI program change, and that's the preset number. So we've got a value for my particular one, CC value of zero, the value of three, and then the MIDI program change is gonna be six, and that's gonna correspond per this uh, table here to uh, preset 390. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and actually insert some MIDI here. So I'm gonna start on bar three on the first beat. I'm gonna click in the ruler bar, third bar, right click inside of this region here to create a new MIDI region. You'll need to do that first. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna double click it. Some people like to actually put something in here. If you press the command key while you're down here, you can actually put something in here if you want. And it's really just a placeholder just to see these events if, it's, you know, if, it, if that helps you out. But what we're concerned about is we're gonna click this, we're gonna go over here to the right and we're gonna click this button over here on the far right which is the list view you can also press the d on your keyboard and that will bring it up as well what i like to do is is we're only worried about controller and program change i like to turn all these other ones off i don't really need to see any of those we know i need to go to preset number 390. first thing i want to do is i want to choose what kind of event i want to insert so in this case i want to insert a controller and then you're going to press the plus bar that's going to automatically put it on this beat right here. 
So status is control. Um, channel number is one. That's the MIDI channel, I think, right? Yeah. And then uh, under number, that's the CC number. So this needs to be set to zero. Um, just double click on it and just hit zero and enter. The value is going to be where the bank is. And we're going to be, we're worried about bank three. And if you remember from the table, it says three comma six. Six is going to be the program change. So hit three, enter. We're done right there. We're done with this controller. I'm looking down at my FC to make sure it's not changing. Next thing we want to do is enter a program change. So change it to program change. Hit the plus bar. Same thing. So now we're going to go over here. This is fine. Don't worry about this number. This is the value that we're worried about. So let's bring up this and I'll show you. Right now it says PR gravity. So it will probably, yeah, it's going to go away when I click this, but that's okay. I'm going to click, it always does that. I'm going to click six or type six. If I bring this up, it's going to have changed it. Not that. It's going to change it over to this. So now it changed it to this guy. Let's minimize him. The first step is done. So we've set our preset at the beginning of the song. You want to do that first, otherwise it'll just stay on the last preset. And I put it on beat three for, for organization, plus I've given myself uh, some lead time for a, a click or a count off. So now let's say we're going to go, we're going to play an intro for a few bars. Then we're going to create another one, another MIDI event. So right click again, just like in the beginning, create empty region. It's already here. Like I said, you can hit the command button and or command key and you can put something here if you want. Right. Oops, I totally messed that up. So for this one, all we need to do is a controller uh, event because we've already done the program change, which is and the controller, which changes the preset. We unless you were changing to a different preset, you don't need to worry about another program change in, in this MIDI lane. So I've changed it to controller, hit the plus. Now you know, verify this, this was a frustrating thing for me. Make sure it stays on, it's actually at the bar that you want it to be. For our bank selection, we have this at zero. This time, if you remember, the first thing we did was select the scene select uh, value or scene select number, which is gonna be 34. You're gonna put that in here, 34. And then this is gonna be your scene number. Scene one is actually zero. So you're gonna set, if you want scene one, you're gonna set that to zero. And scene one or scene two is gonna be one, scene three, two, and so on. So I'm gonna just walk up the, the scenes and then I'll play through this and you can watch them change. So we're gonna to go to scene one, which is zero, the value. Let's go ahead and keep these um, kind of evened out. I'm going to go over to bar 11, right click and create another empty region. And it totally went the wrong way. So bar 11, same thing, another controller, we're going to change over to scene two, verify you have the right position and set this value to 34 for scene select. And this is going to be one enter. You can copy and paste. I have found some strange behavior where it just won't put the right position or bar and you got to kind of mess with it to get it right. I've also seen where you start the session and it's got a, an event in this area. And before you can even add anything, you have to delete that event. It will not let you put any kind of event in here. So, and it says it's usually labeled Axe Effects 1 or whatever you've labeled that but it just throws an error about it can't you know put any events in folders so just delete that and then put the MIDI event back in there. So we've got scene two right so I'm going to go over here there's that right word again same kind of thing um, we're going to go ahead and create another one and you, and you get the point here but I just want you to see it in action. Uh, there's that another controller change I think we went over, what was this last one? So we're gonna do 34 again. And value, I think we had three. So let's just leave it at four scenes. So I think that's good for now. The only thing I, I did forget um, is, is going in here and actually setting a scene on here. So initially when you do this, you also need to put another controller in there that gets you to the right scene. 
So why don't we, I'm gonna go ahead and change this and I'll just come back. So I'm gonna actually have the scene one, two, three, and four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to some random preset. I've got the metronome on just to feel like we're actually playing something. We're gonna come over to, come over to spandex and hairspray because we're gonna do it live. I can, I'll write I'm gonna put it, this we'll guy over here so you can kind of see it side by side, maybe right here so it's in the frame. And I'm gonna hit play and then I'm gonna bring the window back up. All right, here we go. It's gonna change to 390 on scene one. Bar seven should jump over to scene select or number scene number two. There you go, scene number two, clean. Go into bar 11. I know it's probably annoying. Coming over here to scene four. So now that I've actually showed you how to do it, we're gonna jump over to an actual song and I'm gonna show you how it's changing. Maybe I can actually keep my guitar turned up a little louder than the actual mix. All right, so I've got my spandex and hairspray up here. We're gonna do it live. And I'm gonna put it under here so you can actually see the changes coming up. And I need to click on, unfortunately, because it's I need a count off. So we're gonna go ahead and do this, and then I'll pop that X edit window back up. <laughs>
all the beauty of playing solos real time. So there's some flubs in there, but you get the point. So really uh, some cool stuff. I'm not sure how I feel about bringing my laptop and relying on that to run tracks uh, without having two laptops or something like that. But it is for a really complicated setup, like your periphery stuff, something, and this is what they do. So, so I hope this has been informative for you, and I hope maybe you can use this in some of your situations here, and maybe I've de demystified some of this for you. So have a good week. Don't forget to subscribe. Notification bell. Leave me a comment. We did it live. Do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live!